still round. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's flat. <laughs> he has a he's an interesting guy, man, and uh, you know, he believes it so. Kyrie, the Earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So whatever. Earth is flat. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> This is the Truth Frequency Radio Network. We are TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship currently at war with the mainstream scientific community. Meanwhile, the peanut gallery is running laps around a track in preparation for his enlistment in the United States Space Force, President Trump jokingly said today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I am your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, well, you're not really good at the whole internet thing. For those of you listening to this on YouTube, you want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, the show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. And if it is not March 13th, 2018... As I can look at my new clock that actually says it March 13, 2018, so I don't actually have to do the math. The uh, then it's not live, and you have to you know find find a live broadcast seriously, um, because if it's a rerun and you call the phone number, you're not going to get me. Quote of the day from the peanut gallery: Once you can accept the universe as matter expanding into nothing, that is something. Wearing stripes with plaid comes easy. That's Albert Einstein. Regardless of what you believe about the man, he was extremely quotable. Uh, a couple quick announcements. Canadian Flat Earth Conference is going to be happening this August in Edmonton, Canada. I believe that's in Alberta. I don't know all the provinces by heart. Also, the if you haven't checked it out, go to fe2018.com. The Flat Earth International Conference for this year is going to be in Denver, Colorado. Coming up, November. That's fun. Also, just found out this morning that the documentary that they've been following us around for the entire entirety, whatever, the entire year of 2017, uh, it's going to be called Behind the Curve, and it's going to be at the Toronto Film Festival coming up next month. And I believe I am going to be attending to try to help in whatever way I can to get this thing moving forward, which is great. And what else? Oh, yeah, the Mark Sargent Flat Earth Challenge. This is my personal declaration of war from Flat Earth against mainstream science. I, Mark Sargent, hereby put forth a challenge to any university 
foreign or domestic, to debate or discuss the flat earth reality. The short version is this. You fly me in, take care of my hotel, and I'll face down any scientific body you put against me. My only debate requirement is that you have someone with a master's degree in a physical science either participating in or supervising the event. Accept this challenge and you will be treated with respect. If not, then you're just cowards hiding behind empty equations. Tonight is going to be a call-in show. I'm having a little I'm look, I I I am not going to come down on the military guys that that back out or they slow down because it gets too real for them. Uh, I had a Navy guy that I was working on a statement from, an Air Force guy. He's not too sure either. And then the NASA guy, of course, he went to the hospital almost immediately afterwards. And I'm hopefully he comes out soon. And the phone numbers are as follows. Anyone who wants to call in and chat about whatever. We can even talk about movies if you want. Because I just watched, what did I watch last night? The Shape of Water, which I think is a fascinating title. And even the title, remember that that one, uh, Best Picture of the Year at the Oscars just, what was it, a week ago? Best Picture of the Year, or Best Picture of the Year, Shape of Water. And the title, I, I, I'm i a big movie guy, I cannot figure out the title other than it helps us. Because as we know, water always finds its own level. And we, we brought up the shape of water more often than just about anyone. So it helps us a great deal. Phone numbers to call in. You can use either 213-233-3998. That's 213-233-3998. Peanut Gallery says, Thor Ragnarok was better. And yes, speaking from a fanboy's perspective, you're absolutely right. Ragnarok was very entertaining. Although not as deep as the shape of water. But anyway, uh, the other phone number is 720-897-6111. That, both those numbers really go to the same place. So you don't have to worry about that. That's 720-897-6111. If you're calling from the UK, it's 44203-393-2871. And if you just want to call, this is the, the, the more important one. If you just want to call and listen on your phone, call this number, 641 793 Seven one one seven. Because if I see you on the board, in fact, let me look on the board real quick. So, yeah, there is. Uh, there's people already on the board. If I see you on the board, I will probably pick you up. But I will let you know beforehand. I'll say, hey, two five two zero or two one four or, or wow. I'll, I'll, in fact, now there's a whole bunch of calls coming in. Fantastic. Uh, okay, before I pick up the calls, real fast, just want to let you guys know because I'm always looking for subject matter experts who we have had so far. Let's see how many of these you know. United States Navy missile instructor, United States Air Force navigator, a Marine Corps sniper instructor, a Navy submarine chief, an Army artillery radar operator, an Australian intelligence officer, an American flight instructor, an industrial engineer specializing in valves and seals, a career ser- surveyor of 32 years, an international shipping expert, a corporate travel agent, an air traffic controller, United States Army master gunner, an aviation and ground training combat expert, a USDA surveyor of 27 years, a 32nd degree mason, an etheric science researcher, a commercial airline captain, a commercial airline co-pilot, an industrial vacuum expert, a merchant marine, an army air traffic controller, a United States Navy quartermaster. I even got a merchant marine in there. Isn't that amazing? All these people love flat earth. None of them hate it. None of them ever called back to say that, oh, you know, I was wrong. No one recanted and no one has gone up against them from their respective fields. I've, I've yet to find a military guy to come out against another one of his, you know, his comrades. Wow, comrades, probably not the right word to use there. What are we, in Soviet Russia? <laughs> uh, in Soviet Russia, flat earth finds you. But actually, I think that's the same in the United States. All right, we've got calls. We've got calls. Let's take them. Yeah? Everybody ready? All right, let's go to... Who are we going to get first? Let's try Texas. Two, we're just going to go in, in order uh, that I see them because for whatever reason, I don't see the Beverly Hills guys in there. 254 area code. Ready? There we go. You're on with Strange World right now. What's up, Mike? Hey. 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 Oh, my gosh. You know, I'm a TV buff and I shouldn't be, but I can't help myself. That's all right. We all have our vices. What's uh, <laughs> yeah. what 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 about TV is is on your mind? I was just watching a series called Blackish. It's Blackish. A- oh no, I have not. I have not watched Blackish. But but that's okay. that's right. Go ahead. You know of the of the series. I do know of it. Yes. Okay. Well, they're kids. They're very strict with them. They think. 
And then they are at a breakfast with a couple that have no rules for their kids and their kids are running all over the place. And one of their kids spills bacon off their table, off her plate, the mom's plate. And she turns to the mom and says, your daughter just stole my bacon. And she's like, oh, that's okay. You know, we feel a commune plating is whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Anyway, and so they have a, their children are having a collective experiment at school. Like mm-hmm. her two children are having an experiment and those two people are having an experiment. Anyway, those kids come up with this awesome app and where you can draw a picture and make it into a Picasso or this or that, or, you know, whoever kind of artist you want it to look like. Sure. So they realize, oh, our children are making a vinegar and, you know, soda volcano. They're going to the vinegar and baking soda. Yeah. Yes. And so they tell them, oh, y'all should be, you know, running around doing whatever you want. They give say, oh, you need your freedom because obviously they're not growing. And they actually say our children are two steps away from being a flat earther. Really? Yes, that was awesome. tonight. I didn't know if you were going to have a punchline to that story, and I waited, and you, you did. You came through. That's awesome. The awesome. first time I've ever heard that said on, like, a sitcom as, like, a derogatory, you know, they're like, our children are two steps away from being flat earthers. And, uh, yeah, that's, all, that's great. Again, it's, it's the media are not shy about using it. Which I which I it's love. Crazy, yeah. The media says it, but I had that's my first time to see it on a series. That's awesome. Crazy. Great. Well, thank and you. Thank you for that. I had to let you know because you know, I'll immediately. And my husband heard it first. He, I mean, he heard it and he was like, "Did they do?" I was like, "Yep, they did." <laughs> and you are the first person to tell me this. So, uh, Blackish. And it was it the current episode or is it a rerun? It no, it was a new episode. Cool. I believe I'm almost positive it was a new episode today. So, so the latest the episode, of, episode of Blackish actually mentioned Flat Earth. That's fantastic. Bring it into comedy. I love it. All right. Yeah. Any, anything else before I send yeah. you off? Because apparently the, the calls that people are. No, nothing else. I hope everyone has a wonderful night. And you too. Let's keep keep on charging. I mean, it's coming into sitcoms now. Oh, yeah. We're, we're going to hit them. So, we're going to hit them where it hurts. We are. It's, it's awesome. All right, you have a good We're night. Waking them up. All right, you too. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Okay, let's jump right over to another Texas one. Let's do 214. 214 area code. You're on with Strange World. Hi, Mark. This is Jan. I had a question about the color blue. Um, one of my very, very most favorite songs is Crystal Blue Persuasion. Mm-hmm. And I understood several years ago that the color blue is the hardest to do in fireworks. And I want to ask you that question. The, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, blues and purples and violets, it's just the chemicals that are used. They're, they're just the most expensive. Uh, it, it's interesting, by the way, that I do not get a lot of fireworks questions. And I, I'm, I'm impressed that you asked that. In fact, a little trivia for you. The cheapest fireworks really to make are the loud ones that's really you know when it when it comes like the booms the the big reports you hear in the air that sound like cannon fire those are the cheapest ones to make that's just powdered aluminum uh powdered wow powdered aluminum sulfur potassium chlorate uh, in equal parts and uh or you can spike it with magnesium if you want but i don't want to go into too much stuff but it's but yeah the the, the blue and purples it's just the chemicals that are used i if, if i had the time i'd look up to you know i'd tell you exactly what chemicals they were that produced the pur- blues and purples but that's why they cost the more the, the most when you go to the the fireworks stands oh wow that's great i just was curious about that and could you ask the peanut gallery question for me sure does this daughter make a snow globe t-shirt hey does the peanut gallery's daughter make a snow globe flat earth t-shirt like a like a flat earth t-shirt with a snow globe kind of logo thing on it right i don't know uh that's a good question you've been to the you've been to the website obviously 
oh, no, since my sort of accident, I can't do that. So that's why I'm asking. I mean, oh, 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 uh, <laughs> you know what? Let me, let me see if I can go to it right now. One sec. So if I go okay. to YouTube and I type in me, one sec, I can find out for you. I didn't think okay. there was, but uh, hang on. He says, he says, what does he say? <laughs> what does he say? <laughs> uh, got got the one on the dome. So there is there is a snow globe ish one. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know what? Let me let me go to it, I, just so I can I can look. It just takes a minute. Unfortunately, I've got too many things open. One sec. So let me go in here. So what I'm doing is, as you guys know, in in the description box of every single video that I have, there is a join the flat Earth army, and the peanut gallery's daughter is she runs that and I don't, I don't see a dime from it. And of course we got the flat earth university flag, which was designed by Zulu one Mark from New York. Mm. And it was polished up and the graphics were refined in Photoshop through Karen B from FE core. So I'm looking, so we got the flat earth university shirt. We got a flat earth army shirt, uh, a couple more the United nations logo, a globe with a big, Ghostbusters line through it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's one kind of like, yeah, Dome Earth. It's literally called Dome Earth. And yeah, I actually like it better than a snow globe. That's that's all it's called. Oh, Dome Earth. Dome Earth. Okay. Great. All right. Well, thank you for that. And thank you for the uh, blue. You take care, okay? All Have right. Good night to everybody. See you, Jen. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That was Jan from Dallas. Love her accent. So great. Uh, all right, let's jump over to 916 area code. 916, you are on the phone with Strange World right now. Hello, Mark. This is Michael. Nice hey, to Michael. With you. Hey. Hey, um, I sent you an email also just before I even got on the line here. But okay. If you see it, it's, it's called about a question about um, the, um, the sunlight under the clouds. Okay. Uh, let me back up a little bit. I've been... Uh, um, Watching your clues, I've been on uh, the flat Earth for a couple of years now. Got intrigued back on coast to coast, and like you say, just fell in it, man. I, <laughs> I wasn't going to dispute it. But I checked it out, and I go, "God damn, you know they're telling us a bunch of crap here." <laughs> right. And it was exactly. good. So I'm hooked. I like it. I love it. I really do love it. Right. So my question is, how do I explain, um, at um, for the lack of terms, at sunset, um the color of the clouds are, it looks like it's illuminated from underneath. And I, and that's one of the ones that just tripped me up when I try to explain people or explain stuff to people. And I, and that's when I can't answer what would be a correct way to answer. Wow. I don't know if there is a correct way to answer, to be honest. Um, the bet, my, the, the thing that I throw people is if you're, if you're going to go down that road, personally, I'd stay away from, if the sun is your starting point, it's going to be a little trickier than most. Go into yes. go into YouTube, type in Flat Earth Sun, and look for videos that are done by three different people. And you're, you're going to have to study some of these. There's some homework for you. Okay. One, of course, is DITRH, no otherwise known as Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, otherwise known okay. as dearth or dit ra or however you want to it, i hate some Correct. of the acronyms Correct. the one of the other guys is zeteticism.com that's that's the name Zeteticism? of his youtube zeteticism you'll know if you plug it into google it, it'll it'll spell check it for you and that's from uh, a guy named that's from jeffrey grupp if you've ever heard me mention his name he's he's mm -hmm. physically one of the few flat earthers that has a, a head that's larger than mine I mean, I mean, he's got to oh, be like, yes. a, like, I don't think he's got like a size nine hat, but if he owns hats, but he'd have to go like a, a big and tall shop for hats. And the last one would be go to, and, and his channel's back now. He did some great 3D perspective modeling, and that is my perspective. And that guy's name is Rory Cooper out of South Africa. He does some great, great Rory stuff. Rory Cooper, yeah. So gotcha, between gotcha. the, th and his channel disappeared for a while. I don't know why, but it came back. So between those three guys, look there for the sun. Uh, there's some gotcha. wonderful footage out there. I mean, even even without focusing on the on the sun hitting the bottom of the clouds, 
some of the most uh-huh. damning video I've seen has that been where because you know it only takes one guy to figure it out. It's like, hey, if we zoom in on boats that disappear and they come back, can we do the same thing to the sun? And you can, you can, you can absolutely, no yeah, yeah. The sun can absolutely set, and you can zoom in and bring it up, back up again. No kidding. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Check, check that out if you get a chance. Now, doesn't that necessarily prove a flat Earth? It's, no, it goes. Exactly. I mean, it, it it doesn't prove it, but it doesn't prove anything else either. I mean, what, what's going on here? Do you explain to me that phenomenon right there, buddy? Who I'm talking to at work? Yeah. Explain that one to me. You know, explain. You know, go ahead and wa- go ahead and watch right. the the boat go over the horizon, zoom out in on it, and there it is again. What's happening to it? You and, tell and me, buddy. I'm absolutely. not going to tell you. You tell and me. One- one more guy, uh, if you haven't already seen some of his work, Rob Skiba has done some wonderful experimentation. Yes, yes, oh, yes. I've, 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 on my email, I've explained to him, I've, I've followed this, a bunch of people there, so I get a bunch of perspectives, and I've, I've got, the, I've bought books, I got the maps on my wall at work here and whatever, and and so you know, I, it's not like I'm just you know, listen, I'm out there you know looking into it big time, and I go, yeah, this is a, this is this is for real, man. Nice, you know? nice, that's awesome, cool. Well, good for you. Well, that's good stuff. Hey, Mark, any, it's been any. A Anything else? No, that's it. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. And maybe I'll talk to you again later on when I got the time. All right. I'll be thank you. you on the show. All right. Thank you for You're calling welcome. in. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Let's move on to another California. Let's do 657. There you go. 657. You're on the air of Strange World. Don't be nervous. It's just you and me and probably the entire Department of Defense. Oh man, I that was such a great lead in, and, and now you're gonna leave me hanging. Seriously, pick up the phone because I don't hear anything. I don't even hear you breathing. And if you muted your mic, that's a rookie mistake. Oh, and you hate to sorry see about it. that. I was on mute. <laughs> I'm sorry you about did. that. You Here muted I go. your mic. I knew it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, it's okay. Thanks for uh, taking the call, Mark. Um, you know, and no need to be nervous. You're one of my favorite YouTubers. I've watched probably about 400 hours of your work, so. Why would I be nervous? I feel like you're like my big bro or something. So it's oh, good. well, there you go. What's, uh, am I bailing you out? Or is there a, a girl that you want me to help you get? I mean, I'll, I got, I got a girl. I got, I, I'm married. So, you know, oh, if, right. you know uh, me, uh, if she's listening, I totally didn't mean that. I totally didn't mean that. He no, was well, she, for- well, you know what? I might not be married too much longer because ever since I told her I was a flat earther, I don't think she likes me as much. So, well, uh, if she, if she before yeah. she decides to to call it quits, have her have her email me, and I will I will try to do my best to to say you know what I I do that, and, okay. and that knocks off the check checks off the box for relationship advice. But I have another question mark. I'm yeah. I'm very curious to to see what you think about the uh, the extraterrestrial phenomena, and and have you given thought to like where these beings come from because. I looked at you know tons of evidence before I got to flat Earth. And we call me conspiracy theorists, but I, I feel like there's definitely something going on there. Where are these things coming from? Uh, are they are they interdimensional where they can zip in and out of the firmament and go to different places? That's one of my many questions. But I'll wait until next week to ask another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I anyone that knows me, anyone that's heard my stuff, I absolutely believe in other civilizations. Do I and I've seen look, I I I have spent a considerable amount of time purchasing night vision binoculars and going out, especially in the in the, the wonderful high air of Colorado. And I watched UFOs all the time. All, literally all the time. And but do I think and I did this way before I was into flat earth. So do I think that they're from other planets? No. Do I think they're real? Yes, I do. Do I think they're interdimensional, like they were trying to pull off, do, you know, the, with the Indiana Jones Kingdom of the Crystal Skull thing? Yeah, I suppose. But I think they're they're older versions of us. I do. I uh, I think every civilization has a duration of time. Let's say five thousand years, give or take. And once they develop a unified field engine, or they're allowed to develop it, that's it. You know, the then they graduate and move on and have to go somewhere else. But I think the remnants still stick around. So that is the big question that when you see things flying around, are they coming in from outside the dome or are they trapped in here with us? Oh, that's a tough call. I don't, I don't know which one I I really enjoy more because they're both great stories. Uh, As a matter of fact, that was a a brilliant answer though. 
Uh, well, millions. I've I've heard I've heard the question a lot, uh, and it made me really look into it. If anyone doesn't really know what I'm kind of getting at here, uh, look at the greatest UFO sighting of all time, which is not Roswell, which is not Aurora, Texas. It is 1561 Nuremberg, Germany, otherwise known as the 1561 event. You can look it up; it's not secret information. There's a wiki entry. Uh, for God's sakes, uh, where, you know, two giant space armadas, well, you can call them space armadas, two giant armadas, let's call them that, just started squaring off over the town for a solid hour, and then a third faction showed it, showed up and chased them all away. And they didn't have cameras wow. back in 1561, but they drew the whole thing out. And, you know, the, the, the two factions, so why were there three factions? And the question is, my, my big thing of that was, what took the third faction so long to get there? An hour response time? I mean, you go to the worst part of New York or Detroit, it, you'll still get there faster in an hour. So, I don't know. It's, but I do believe they're real. I do. I think there's rules in place, though, and that is you, the, the civilization that currently is on the surface has to develop naturally. And in order to do that, you can't interfere, you, meaning you can't leave such a lasting impression that it changes their future. Sort of like, again, if you're a movie fan, the uh, Star Trek uh, Into Darkness, where all they all, you know, the native people saw the ship leaving and they were never coming back and they threw away their old religion, just just tossed it. And they started just drawing the Star Trek Enterprise because that was their new their their new religion. So anyway, Super what what cool. else? My last question, Mark. I got into an argument on the on the, on, the, on the one of your videos the other day. I'm all I'm all up and down the comment sections, and someone said that Mark Sargent is a, is your stage name. So can you set the record straight? Holy like, smokes! It, I, it, I I will say this. I am very lucky, and I didn't realize this until I was like a freshman in high school that my parents picked a cool name for me. Because my my dad's name was uh, G. Kendall Sargent. My name is Mark Kendall Sargent, named after him. Uh, they, in fact, I was supposed to be called Mike, which I don't think would have been as fun. Uh, I, yeah. They they changed it at the last minute, but yeah, I mean, it's Mark Sargent. You guys can look me up. I was born in Seattle and I was raised in I the told South, you guys. South I Whitby told them. South Whitby school system. My entire life went to Washington State and then transferred over to Western Washington University, and then went to Colorado and played games and taught proprietary software for twenty years. It is absolutely my my real name. I've got I've got annuals that are, I've got so much literature with my name on it that. It, but I don't know. I mean, I can understand that. It's it's actually a pretty good stage name, if you wanted to go for stage names. Yeah. There there are worse out there. I lucked out. There's no actors with my name. Oh crap! We're going to break. I'm sorry. We gotta we gotta say goodbye. Thank you so much, Mark. My All right, man. Have a good one. Uh, thank you so much. God bless. All right. See ya. No hate, no hype, no fear. We are TFR, your protection from, from deception. Welcome back to Strange World Part 2 of 4. Tonight is a call-in show, so you guys want to call in and talk about whatever. Don't be nervous, and if it's your first time, I'll be gentle. Phone number to call in is 213-233-3998. That's 213-233-3998. Oh, Peanut Gallery, you are late. He's going, put the phone numbers out again. I was, I was so far ahead of you. 720-897-6111. 720-897-6111. UK 4420339328712871 and if you want to call in and just listen and don't want me to pick you up I don't know why that would be it's 6417937117 6417937117 and we got calls letters we get letters we get lots and lots 
of letters. Okay, let's do four. Oh, my eyes. I'm getting old, folks. 404 area code. Here we go. 404, you're on live with Strange World right this second. Hey, what's going on, Mark? Hey. Hey, this is uh, Carl from DC. Hey. I got a question for you. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I'm, uh, there's some guys shooting lasers across frozen lakes trying to nullify the effects of atmospheric refraction. Has has anybody ever, uh, I guess, postulated the idea of shooting shooting a, uh, an underwater laser from shoreline to shoreline? No, and here's why. Yeah. There isn't there, and, and you know what? And I I love you for thinking outside the box on this. That is that is one of the most original things I have heard in a year. However, the problem is is that. The water is so dense, there is not a body of water clear enough that you could shoot any given length underwater that mm. would, that would, that would, it would just distort the beam, something horrible. I mean, forget about, you know, the lakes and ponds and crap like that, you know, that you, you could, can't see freaking 30 feet in front of your face. I mean, if you went down to the, the Caribbean, you know, with the, the beautiful blue waters down there and shot it underneath the water, you're just, you're just not going to get anything. Water bends bends light in so many weird ways that you're just not going to get a decent result. Don't forget that we have a hard time just firing a laser through what we're breathing. Because remember, you're you're breathing. If water is two parts hydrogen to one part oxygen, you know, and if it's salt, it's probably a 3% salt solution. We're breathing four parts nitrogen to one part ox- oxygen. We're only breathing, you know, per by volume, 20% oxygen. So, well, that that depends on your elevation. Uh, yeah, you know what? You're absolutely right. Very, very good point. It would be less than twenty percent as you got up higher. Uh, but the point is, is that most of what we we do is nitrogen. So anyway, it's a nice idea, but but no, the underwater tests are would be a, a nightmare logistically. So, so speaking of elevation, like I've yeah. lived all over the country. Yeah. And say on the East Coast. <clears throat> In the winter, it's like 35 degrees out. It's cold. Yeah. You look up and see the sun, and the sun doesn't do anything for you. You can't feel the heat from it. Nope. Well, when I was living in New Mexico at yeah. an elevation of 7,500 feet, same, same temperature, 35 degrees. Yeah. You look up and see the sun, you feel the blaring heat of the sun, even though it's 35 degrees out. Yeah. Yeah, I could I could see that. As I li- soon as I, go ahead. As soon as the sun goes down, mm-hmm. the temperature drops. Even though the, the, the thermometer standing next to you says it's thirty five, it still feels warm. So it's kind of like uh, if you were outside and you had a heater next to you, right? And I, you felt the heat from the heater. It's great. You take your clothes off, grill out a hot dog, whatever. Mm-hmm. But as soon as you turn that heater off, it's cold. Right. So there's the cold conductive heat loss or convective heat loss from the air, but you feel the radiant heat from the sun cutting through that cold air, even yeah. though it's winter. So my question is, mm-hmm. it, what p- part of the sun, uh, what does the sun really play in a role of the uh, like changing of the seasons? I think it plays a much less significant role than mainstream science says. And I've I've said this since year one, which is it it can consider it the same way you would consider the sun coming through a window in a car. There are many other things that affect the temperature in that car, the heated seats, the air conditioning, the um, uh, the windows being rolled up and down crap like that not to mention whatever else is going on, on the inside you know the body heat from the people and does somebody have a propane lamp inside there you don't know so when it comes to the to this world though if you look at it from a flat enclosed system especially an enclosed pressurized system yeah lots of different factors the jet stream up above which is carrying huge amounts of air the underwater conveyor system which transfers massive amounts of energy and from what mainstream mm-hmm. science tells us it pretty much creates weather and then the uh, the volcanic system below that, the magma system, that you combine all those things. I think the sun is there, more of a placeholder. 
it's there to remind us of what's happening, but it's not the all powerful sort of like the moon. And and I don't want to cut you off too quickly, but eventually I, I I've got to go to other calls. But I want to I want to mention the moon real quick because a lot of people say, well, you know, the moon affects the tides, the moon, and only the moon. I'm going, yeah, but not if that moon is really, really small. If that moon is less than 50 miles wide, you can't tell me it's a directional magnetic force that's affecting the tides just on its own. Because if I was building this place, I would control the tides from down below and then just tell people Mm -hmm. it was the moon. Because that's – they'd buy it anyway. It's like, oh, the moon's at this point in the sky. Remember, I'll end this on a biblical thing even though I'm not going to preach chapter and verse here, which was the sun – and the moon and the stars in the sky were for signs and wonders and for keeping track of things. That's it. Before people had calendars. So it's like, okay, you know, the sun's in this part of the sky. We have this sort of season. The moon's this side in the sky. We've got this sort of tide happening. So anyway, any, any shout well, outs, you want, well, any shout outs before I let you go? Uh, hey, yeah, just shout out to the community. Right. Well, good for you. See, he wasn't selfish. Yeah, man. At all. All right, man. Uh, you have a, thanks you have for a, taking my call. All right. You have a good one. We'll talk soon. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. All right. Let's jump straight over to 626 area code in, oh boy, hopefully I hit the right button, in Alhambra, California. Hey, what's up, boss? Hey, I know you. You're that, you're that guy that likes to flat, flat smack people. Dude, I got another one the other day. Uh... I just posted the video this morning, actually. I, uh, I, I caught part of this, but go ahead. Recap it for me. Dude, I, that guy was so triggered in that Chili's, man. He was actually he was yelling. like He was arguing with himself as he was leaving the restaurant when I was pulling out of the parking lot. Yep, yep. And, like, and for those, those so people upset. don't know what we're talking about here, it's that uh, Josh and a friend of his were talking about Flat Earth and somebody overheard from another table and they almost lost their minds. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> uh, and then uh, the call, oh, you were talking about that Star Trek movie about uh, the civilization on the planet? Yeah. Here's a fun fact for you. Do you know what the planet in that movie was called uh, that they were was, on? Was it Nibiru? Yes. Uh, I, I lucked out, actually. I, I'd seen the movie enough times that I, I, it was, I did not know it for sure. I wouldn't have bet real money on it, but I pretty, I, somebody had mentioned that. It, and if, in fact, it was pointed out to me by a conspiracy guy some, some time ago. But yeah, yeah, nice. <clears throat> And then uh, the guy that was talking about the sunlight under the clouds, yeah. uh, instead of trying to answer them on how that can happen, yeah. like on a flat earth, we should be throwing that question back at them and be like, well, why are we seeing any light under the clouds on your ball? Because right. remember, if the clouds are curved around the edge, technically, when you look out at the horizon, you should be seeing the bottom of clouds not a blue sky. Good point. Good point. And if the sun's 93 million miles away, it would, you would never see the bottom of the clouds. So. Nice. Right on, man. But yeah. Uh, besides that, dude, that's about it. <laughs> right. So, okay. So, I just, just call in. Just... Well, no, no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm glad you called in. And there's a, there's a lot of people that are calling in tonight. The, uh, l- go ahead and plug your video for those people that want to hear somebody that's, uh, that's eavesdropping on a flat Earth conversation decide to go nuts. Uh, well, uh, my channel name is just my name. Like always, it's Josh Walker. And okay. I'm pretty sure if you type in in the search bar, just like chilies and triggers, it'll probably pop up. <laughs> nice. All right. That's cool. Not or maybe mind. flat earth chilies and triggered. Yeah. Yeah. BN people, yeah, there's, a, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a reason why in the first paragraph of my very first clue, I try to warn people. I say, look, this is madness. This is lunacy. You know, because that's the reaction. It's like, this cannot be real. It's like, eh, it can, actually. Yep. Yeah. So any uh, any, uh, but any, yeah, shout- dude, any shout outs? Uh, well, 
to the usual people, to Zulu, to Candy, uh, Patricia. I saw Patricia was in the chat earlier. Oh, cool. Uh, well, on Zulu's chat. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, everybody else. The guy I went to the dinner with, uh, Jason, shout yeah. out to him. Uh, he was good company to chill with. Nice. And uh, everybody else, uh, peace out, man. All Have right. Have a good night. All right. You too, man. See ya. All right, let's jump straight over to. We're going to do wall to wall calls. Uh, let's. I, I no chance I'm going to make an email today. Or I'm, you know, I, uh, second I say that the phone lines die. Let's do New York nine one seven. I don't think this is downtown, but you know what? I'm still going to do it. Start spreading the news. We're leaving today. Really? You gonna leave me hanging? I want Hello? to be a part of it. Really? Hello. You don't know don't know Sinatra? Don't know Frank Hello? Sinatra? Hey, can you hear me? <laughs> Excuse hey, New York, you there? 917. Can you hear me? I lead in with the with the song, the Frank Sinatra, and you're not there. Are you gone? You're on with Strange World Live. Hey, you? Hello. Hello. Wow. Talk to? You're talking to Mark wow. from Strange can World. You? Can you hear me? Do you have your radio on in the background? No. Oh, so now you can hear me. Okay. What what is what is on your mind? It's just you and me, just talking. What's what's going on? Can you hear me? Of course. Is this Amy? Yes. Amy. That's did funny. You get... I called in the TFR station. Yeah. Just did you to know? To you. Oh, did you just want to listen, or did you but want to talk? Did you want to talk to me? I could talk. I could talk to you for a tiny second because okay. I'm enjoying hearing everyone else talk. Okay. But um, yeah, thank you for introducing me and my husband to yeah this whole whole wild world and to God be the glory because it's. I mean, I stand outside and look up at the stars and I just say, "Wow, Lord, you have allowed this to be revealed to us." and it's mind-boggling, and uh, wow! Well, I'm, I'm yeah, happy, I, happy that I could help. I, you know, the funny thing is, I'll go throughout the day thinking about you know various things. We're 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 researching a ton, but I'm like, oh, if I could get a hold of Mark Sargent about this particular question, or you know, Rob Skiba, or whoever it is, I'm like, oh, I have it right there. But because I'm just listening in, holding a sleeping baby, <laughs> it's a perfect time to go blank with a question. But I just wanted to say. I guess tonight, thank you, and oh, no worries. keep up the good work, and if, if you can for if, just, yeah. If you, if you can think of the question later, go ahead and call back, okay. and I'm only, we're only in part two, there's four parts, and if I see you, because yeah, I, I can yeah. see you, I can see Amy Smith here, if I see you, I will try to oh, pick yeah. you up before the show ends, if you can remember the question. Nice. Okay. And good, by the way, that interview uh, in England, I think it was Liverpool today, I was listening to. Oh, yeah, yeah, that turned out um, okay. Right yeah. on, and I love the ease that you have and the ability to just, like, rattle off those two questions today were really good because, again, it's just that that ease in getting just everyone just sort of just like, okay, let's think about the Van Allen radiation belt and let's think about... Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah Answer questions with good. questions, basically. And, you know, because again, yeah. it's not, it's not my yeah. job to convince you. It's my job to put the no. seed in your head and then let nice. you deal with it. Nice. All it's right. Sort of, well, it's sort of like picking up a call. Oh, hey, yeah, happy to do it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, nice. All right. Have a good right, one. Oh, I'm just going to put you, I'll put you on <laughs> mute so you can listen if you want. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. All right. Bye. Yeah, what she's talking about is the interview I did for a London thing this morning. It was, it was, I think, less than thirty minutes. But uh, what I should have said was, you know, instead of uh, saying that you have to deal with it, it's, it's it's a line from a movie. I think it's Men in Black, the first one. It's like, well, there's a problem with flat Earth. Really, what's that? Well, that's your problem. <laughs> All right, let's jump over to three three one three three one area code. You're on with Strange World right now. Hey, Mark, how's it going? You know, I can't complain, and if I did, well, I I think a few people would listen. What, uh, what's going on with you? Well, not much. Um, I'm the guy that had the dog that was going berserk last week, and uh, I 
board. I remember you. He's sleeping. Yeah, he's sleeping quietly at my feet right now. So let's not wake him up. (laughs) I mean, that is that is the that is the quintessential let sleeping dogs lie right there. Do not wake Mm -hmm. that dog up. So what uh, what can I do for you this, this evening? Well, you know, I was thinking about talking about a couple different things, but I just happened to be looking around on the internet and I see a new article by Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. And he's talking about uh, dropping truth bombs on flat earthers of all things. Yeah. <laughs> and yet he and, he, um, he refused to debate Eric and even though that was a formal invitation by Joe Rogan he wouldn't he wouldn't debate Eric DeBay and he won't touch us. But yeah, and yeah, I hate Neil deGrasse Tyson. Hate him. Well, he says we all lack uh we all lack common sense and and we we have no um uh, reason. We can't we lack reason. That's why we're we're all uh you know we, and we can't be dealt with because of that. You know, he can't he can't reason with us because we have no reason. Right. <laughs> so, I just thought it was funny. He's he's got some video here with a uh, Chuck Nice, the comedian, with him, and and yep. uh, he's talking about uh, Greek uh, observations made by astronomers in in uh, ancient Greece and and all that. And he's like, uh, let's see, one of the three the key things were that uh, in order to actually believe that the Earth is flat in modern day, you also have to believe in just about everything else being fake including every single observation made by astronomers, every photo of Earth, and even gravity. Gravity wouldn't work like it does on our planet if the Earth were flat. And notice all the things that he center. mentioned, all, all the things he mentioned were mainstream, his 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 team, basically. It's like, well, my fellow scientist mm-hmm. astronomers, my fellow scientist physicist, and all the good people at NASA, they, it's like, you, they wouldn't lie to you. Like, no, of course not. None of those people would lie or have any reason to uh, hide the truth. You know, even even though some of them don't know exactly what's going on. In fact, most of them don't know exactly what's going on. They're still going to go out of their way because it's self-preservation. Science is not going yeah. to shoot themselves in the foot if they don't have to. Yeah, yeah that's too bad. Well, they yeah. really uh, they don't seem to get it. I know. It's, you know. It will be the end of them all, that's for yeah. sure. Um, I just, um, you know, I, so, I, you know, we were talking about uh, last weekend, they were, last week we were talking about the uh, a lady called in, she was talking about jet engines being powered on compressed air. And, right, right, yeah, um, the, the jet engine conspiracy. I kind of, yeah, I had to giggle a little bit about it, but, you know, I started looking at it and, you know, there's people that think that these things are actually um, some kind of high-tech uh, anti-grav device, you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it, look, it, I, I, I can explain that with this. In Side effects of flat earth include extreme open-mindedness. And that's really where it mm-hmm. comes from. And I don't blame them. I absolutely don't blame them because I've, I would, I even looked at it beforehand three years ago. I wouldn't have looked at that thing in a million years, along with a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, but at yeah. the same time, that's what flat earth does. It's, it is the last barrier. Once you get into flat earth, everything's back on the table, even stuff we hadn't even thought yeah. of yet. So I, I hope the jet engine thing doesn't get too much traction because it's kind of minor in the grand scheme of things, but still, well, we it's, had it's the, had the EM drive that came on with NASA, you know, looking at it and, right. um, you know, being, uh, something that runs off of microwaves and, and bounces around inside some kind of polished copper, uh, you know, drum. And oh, right, right. I had a friend. I have a neighbor who's a uh, physicist over at, at the now defunct uh, Fermilab National Accelerator. Uh, it's right here in my town. Mm-hmm. And uh, he uh, he just laughed when I, <laughs> I said something about the EM drive working. And, and he says, does that happen to have anything to do with ether? And I was like, uh-huh. no. 
good. good. And he's like, you know, he laughed because, you know, ether is a term for space that was used in the 19th century. And, you know, that's just old news. You know, we don't, we don't right. talk about space like that because it's got, you know, all sorts of magical properties now that, you know, Einstein got his hands on it. And, right. uh, but, uh, there was another, well, that, EM drive was uh, peer reviewed and, and accepted as, you know, it does work. Okay. And I had, you know, kind of a running bet with this guy that, you know, it was going to happen. And sure enough, it did. And even when it didn't reach peer review and it was, you know, accepted yeah. as working, he's like, Oh no, no, it's gotta, it's gotta go through, you know, many more peer reviews before he's going to accept it. Sure. And, um, there was another uh, group that was working on a eh, somewhat similar drive. It's still working on magnetics and, and uh, superconducting materials. And it uh, is called the uh, Nasikas drive. And hmm. it worked um, in uh, liquid nitrogen bath. They put a, um, a permanent magnet that was inside a body made of uh, uh, superconducting material mm -hmm. and it had a one end was shaped like a cone so that it would give like a rocket nozzle effect to the uh, uh, magnetic uh, field mm -hmm. and give a propulsion from it and it does work um, the guy tried to do a an electromagnet version of it and that failed at least they say it failed I'm not so sure it failed. I, you know, it was, yeah, uh, it's one of tough. those. Yeah. You get that close. I and... talked to, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I talked to the, uh, one of the guys that worked with this Dr. Nasikas from Greece, I believe. Um, I talked to, uh, Paul of ILA, who's a, uh, um, uh, he's an author does talks about a lot of different, uh, uh, propulsion and, and, you know, science, uh, physics, uh, things. And he was, I, I posed that to him. I said, you guys wouldn't be, you know, you didn't get approached by anybody and this is just being, you know, quieted and you're being, you know, uh, shut down and told to cease and desist or anything like that. And he said, Oh no, no, it's not, you know, there's nothing like that going on here. We're not being, you know, Right. And, silence by any means. Right. And, and even if they were, they not just, gonna tell you. So. Yeah, exactly. And so what I kind of, you know, well, what are you, who are you going to believe? You know, I mean, uh, right. the, the one device that uses a permanent, you know, like a, a refrigerator magnet, you know, a neodymium, you know, strong, uh, rare earth magnet works beautifully and yeah. for its power to weight ratio, you know, if you scaled it up big enough, you know, we could be uh, taking our Tesla cars and putting a few of these in there and we could go out in the outer space like, uh, you know, the Starman. <laughs> yeah, you, you had to bring that and, up. Uh, nice. Yeah, I had to because, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> it's just it's appropriate. Yeah, the Star. You know, the thing is, is that they they would have to shut something like that down i mean think about it if we all strap on this technology and the next thing you know we're up up in the uh, stratosphere checking out the flat earth and yeah you know that that's not going to work out well for nasa and the rest of them so yeah. you know, I think hey we we got about 45 seconds flight. till the music plays uh any shout outs hey. any anything you want to mention no not really Dog's still behaving and, and uh, can't really ask her any more than that. But uh, <laughs> thanks. Have a good evening. And <laughs> All right. All right. You have a good one. All right. All right. You too. Bye bye. All right. Let's, uh, the phone numbers, and then we'll go to break and we'll come back. Uh, you guys want to call in? It is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111 or 213-233-3998. 213-233-3998. And of course, you just want to call in and listen like quite a few people. It's 641-793-7117. And there's still like five seconds before the music plays. Uh, before the intro music coming in, that was absurd by fluke. 
And then I think as we're going out, I think this is, yeah, this is Sunrise by Simply Red, which is a remake of I Can't Go For That by Hall & Oates. How's that for music trivia? Hi everyone, it's Chris Gio here, founder of You are now tuned into the Truth Frequency. We are TFR. TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, part three of four. And we're doing call in. So 720-897-6111-213-233-3998. That song was an original written just for this show by Chip Baker called Major Kong. And all those sound bites are from Dr. Strangelove, directed by Stanley Kubrick. So let's go to New York, back over to New York. Let's do 845 area code. 845, you're on live with Strange World. What do I want to know? Do you have something I, I can use? I don't know, Mark. How are you tonight? <laughs> hey, it's that guy. It's <laughs> can that you hear guy. Me? Can you hear me? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> it's that guy that designed the Flat Earth University flag. <laughs> that's great uh you caught you totally caught me off guard with that one. Oh, wow. i'm so sorry wow. by nice. the way when i gave all the nice. credit to karen oh, that's funny. And, and and then all of a sudden i hear it's like mark's that's really funny. pissed i was going oh crap mark was the guy that did the initial sketch it's like oh shit ah that's too funny too funny uh, yeah you know i was calling because i've i'm sorry i've up, been I emailing you for like five years I've been emailing you for like five years, and then I realized I had the wrong email. <laughs> Wasn't that awesome? And it's true. She was I, she was not lying. <laughs> she started forwarding me emails that she had sent me to the wrong address. And people, that is a common mistake that people don't they miss. And that is, if your email address has a number at the end of it, you know, not like your birth date or something like that, but like a number, like whatever, 12, 13, 14. Well, there's a problem, and that is if you screw up that number by even one digit, you put in the wrong number, somebody else is getting that email, and you won't get a bounce back message. Yeah. And, you know, so whoever yeah. it is, maybe it goes into their spam folder, maybe they don't care, who knows? But yeah, so what she had done was she had sent emails to msargent at comcast.net, not msargent23. And so whoever msargent was, the original msargent, has been getting emails addressed to me and just ignoring them for whatever reason, probably thought they were from crazy people. Who knows? Weird. Yeah. yeah. I, I wanted to ask you about a, a picture photo about kittens playing with yarn. Is it really? Because you, oh, you want me to say the word? No, I, it was, no, it was just funny that that she said that, and then she said, what did she tell me? Oh, that I ramble? I was so happy. I was like, wow, I, I got know. mentioned in one of Mark's emails. I was like, that is great. I, I want to yeah. meet you, Stella. <laughs> I, I want to meet her. Yeah, <laughs> Stella's been sending me a whole bunch of emails. I can't even I can't even read them all. There's there's so many of them. The and yeah, she was critiquing great. and I but I get that. I've learned, you know, like I, I used to, I I now pronounce et cetera. And but I think I don't I don't think I'm gonna use the word picture anymore. 
unless I use it like <laughs> very, very sparingly because it's a it's a tough word to pronounce correctly without it coming across like you're you know I can, I can imagine myself saying that like so did you see the picture I sent you and you'd be like why just say it like that dude <laughs> it's like I mean, yeah what does that mean say, like so I'm, I'm gonna say photo or images from now on if I can yeah I, I photo sounded good photo sounded uh, good and, and I don't hey, say and, and actually a nuclear yes instead I, of I, nuclear I, I, <laughs> I that is too funny anyway go ahead killing me killing me um uh, I was going to say, I don't know if I missed this or if any, if you guys already talked about this, somebody did, but I was thinking about the tires again with uh, Elon's car. Oh, the non-exploding the rubber, tires, yeah. Yes. It'll, it'll ignite at around 700 degrees, right? The thermosphere is supposed to be up to 3,600 degrees. You know, there, there are experiments now showing that they can get radiant heat even in a vacuum, that sure. the item will still heat up. So, you know, and then, then actually, what where, where I was going was the space shuttle tires. Their tire bay is not pressurized, so how in the hell do those tires not explode as soon as it gets into that they, zero vacuum? That's a good point. I would imagine that they would say that those tires are solid rubber. Yeah, they said they're reinforced. Uh, you know, well, no, that... no, because they're pressurized at three hundred. The front, the front set is pressurized to 300 psi and the rear is set to 340 oh, yeah, then they're so lying through, air in they're, there they're lying through their damn teeth because because I, i'm sorry i've done enough research recently into the vacuum you saw that 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 uh that video clip I was that's what about. made me think about it oh yeah 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 if you yes. guys know what we're talking about type in the power of a vacuum or power of a vacuum into youtube and in fact i'm included in this strange world episode of, it, i'm going to include that train car as part of my intro now forever holy which, crap that was amazing which is look they the germans leave it to the germans they took a, a full-blown steel tanker car rail you know train car and they exposed it to a 90 percent vacuum and that thing crumpled like it was like it was like godzilla had gotten a hold of it but, you know? like it was a paper cup like it was a paper Wait, cup so just went good and it was and it jarred the cameraman the cameraman was so freaked out by it he almost almost lost it. <laughs> i was watching it on my phone and it jarred me yeah i mean it's, I was it's, like, Holy it's, cow. it's shockingly abrupt how fast it happens and then you realize that that's why submarines have to be so reinforced because when you get yeah. you know you, you see those movies like what happens when a submarine goes too far down and go i'll tell you what happens that happens they they just gets that's just what gets happens buckled. and and you're saying and then some people will say they'll say well but that's but that's because the atmosphere is trying to get in i was going yeah yeah all you have to do is reverse it and then you have the opposite applies which is okay explain to me how an aluminum and plastic container is not exploding when it is exposed to a 90 percent vacuum i mean that thing the the iss should be absolutely bursting at its seams almost instantly it would just it, which which makes sense because remember and we, we you know we we've missed this that's why weather balloons burst because they get up high enough and the vacuum right, just keeps expanding, exactly expanding it, and then it blows and that's only 20 miles and it's, and it's absolutely a different force on that material when it's yeah. pressure it's compressing the molecules when it's expanding in that vacuum it's pulling those molecules apart and they're yeah. getting weaker and weaker and weaker yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I, I thought about those space shuttle tires i was like wait a minute did i miss this did somebody already talk about this because yeah, there is there is, is just no, crazy there is there's no no way rubber, there's no synthetic rubber i don't care what you're using synthetic plasticky material that can withstand Kevlar and yeah, yeah, it's not going to withstand a vacuum. A vacuum ah. is going. I, I, I have, I have been selling the power of a vacuum short for a while now, and I didn't realize. Yes. Seriously, the, the, yes. the, the rail car threw me right back into it. It's like, okay, now I know what it, now we're, what we're dealing with. And I was, what you know, I, I shouldn't have sold the, uh, the other guy short either. The industrial engineer, special in valves and seals. He was the first guy to say it. he's going look. He's going, you don't get it. He goes, that that he goes, there's no way the ISS should be intact. And even if it was, the astronauts right. should be really, really nervous at all times. Because we always here's, 
the conditioning from the movies and not to dwell on it because there's still six or seven calls behind you but not to dwell on it right, but, yeah, but, yeah. Think, but think of it this way I don't want to ramble sorry uh, Stella. Okay. Think, <laughs> but if you get in the movies you get a little tiny hole in in the fuselage and people are just scrambling to, to patch it right you know they can still breathe yeah around. that's gonna like, shred uh, you got a hole in a vacuum seriously look at that that steel car in less than oh a quarter second, all the breathable oxygen in that thing was gone. And I, that doesn't mean just the breathable oxygen around you. That means the oxygen in your, in your lungs at the same time. That's gone, too. Everything. It's all, it's Everything. all gone. You would be doomed. Absolutely doomed. A, a, nick, a meteor hitting the reason. One of the reasons why the ISS is impossible is because a vacuum seal is impossible. And one more thing before I let you go, because I'm, I'm going to bring this up more and more. I'm yep. going to, if I get a check, talk to an astronaut. Yes. I'm going to bring this up. So astronauts, be ready for this. Why don't we ever see? And you've heard this. Why don't we ever see? They only train in swimming pools, right? The and and right. it's like wait why would you train in a swimming pool that would be the opposite effect of what you would actually experience in space because remember a swimming pool you have you, you're pushing water it's heavy it's it's resistance in a vacuum Correct, there would be no sure. resistance but your spacesuit would get so rigid from the air trying to get out it would be like trying to move wooden arms you couldn't bend anything it would it would just it would be like a like a tire that would just keep inflating and inflating right. it looked like Michelin man you wouldn't be able to do anything i have never seen a current video of any astronaut in a vacuum chamber we've never seen it in fact the only one we ever saw was back in i think the late 50s early 60s and the guy almost died because it's not a perfect right. suit you know the the right. pressure it's not like being underwater where you know because and your know, expert said we can't even get to that factor of what was it, of eleven absolute, core? Yeah, we the, can't get of, we can't, of absolute space, and we can't yeah, even do that. Can't even do it. And and look at the forces and how violent it is. Oh my God, you're it's amazing. You're right. You're absolutely right. Anyway, uh, hey, all right, I'll get out of here. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Wait, wait, Love wait, everybody. Wait, 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 wait before you go, because oh. otherwise, yes, uh, peanut gallery's already bugging me. Express. Okay, I have a quote for Stella. Anyway. Okay, expressing doubt is how we begin a journey to discover essential truths. And that's from Kilroy J. Oldster. There you go. Awesome. So what's yours? I love the peanut gallery. Yeah. Uh, mine is, life crushes down on your soul. Art reminds you that you have one. Oh, and that was by Stella, Stella Adler. She was an actress from 1901 to 1992. And I just, I don't know. I, I was talking about stuff like with my son and drawing and things. And you know what? Art is a nice thing. You do, you think about the Shoguns and how they were warriors and they would kill, but then they'd go have their little gardens or whatever. And, you know, there was always some other thing that you had to, that you, to balance you out. So, nice. That was it. Thanks. All right. Man. Cool. Cool. Very inspiring. All right. All righty. Love everybody. Peace out. All right. See you, man. All right. Let's jump over to Florida. 941 area code. You're on live with Strange World. If this is your first time, don't mess it up. Mark Sargent. Oh, boy. I've been with you a long time. <laughs> I've been to the show. I, I not that long. How long? I've been waiting at least 40 minutes. <laughs> and I know when okay. I smell full on like I smell the scent of a woman. <laughs> <Now mark. coughs> You're killing me. Don't head. make me break character because I'm doing pretty good. Oh, oh, oh my God! I know, I know what you're doing. Holy smokes! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, but look, that's an older reference. Al Pacino sent a woman. It's good. Thank you, thank you very much. But hey, I want to know <laughs> what you, the superhero of flat Earth, yeah, are up to these days because I know these globalists want to make us feel miserable and alone and it's depressed with no purpose. They want us to light up a doobie, go to line, shoot up some dope, 
and watch Dr. Phil. <laughs> because what they're actually saying is that we're too stupid to trust our own senses, believe our own observations, and spell February. How come, Mark, when you don't see Bill <laughs> 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 the Grass Tyson taking up the challenge, or Bill Nye, the fake science guy, step it up, <laughs> and they'll say, because they're cowards, and they know that Mark Sargent in spell February. I find it amusing that the date your challenge to the academia has been unanswered, completely quiet, no contenders. Not surprising, though, because to be a flat earth critic, you must be able to stand with your peers while sitting on your faculty and lying in your textbook. Because out of the one million professors, Mark, in the United States alone, you think someone I, pr- pretty a million to one? It, it's very, very slim. <laughs> And, and by the way, uh, if, in case you guys aren't, aren't realizing, uh, I am not actually talking to the real Al Pacino. So, uh, so, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Don't immediately start blogging about this, you know, after we hang up and say, holy it smoke. It wasn't that bad of an impersonation. It wasn't that bad, right? Was no, bad. actually, it was good. I actually liked it. And and had it been louder, I think it would have been more obnoxious. I know you're kind of a little bit away from the microphone, but it was good. It's good. I, I was, I'm half, I was half to I wanted to chime in like it was like I wanted to do a hoo every you know every so often, but I, <laughs> I was gonna do it. It's I was good. Do it. It's good. And by the way, uh, the um uh the challenge it's it's yeah it is tough. There was a feeler from UCLA. They backed down. The closest that I've gotten so far is a, a professor from Georgetown <laughs> University who they a German television company did a very structured thing where they filmed me asking five questions to this guy. And then he took it and listened to the, watch the five questions and he was going to respond. And the five questions I threw at him were basically, let me guess. Let me guess. Yeah. I can guess something about the vacuum. Yep. Vacuum was number two. Long distance, long distance photography. Yep. That's, that's one of them. Yep. Uh, I have something else. I know I have this here. Ecl- eclipse Give me shadow. A I'm thinking. The eclipse. Okay, the, what, okay, I did a study with this on my with my friend on the eclipse shadow, okay. and I told him there's no way a shadow smaller handball that you play handball with, right? Yeah. And we we put it to the ground, and I'll be darned, the thing was smaller. How was, much? Uh, how much shorter. smaller though? Because well, the higher he went, the, the smaller it got. Uh, well, okay, two two things there because it's a trap question now. Now, now, go at your friend this way, which is okay, fine. If the moon, which is supposedly two thousand miles wide, only cast a seventy mile wide shadow, which is a ninety seven percent decrease, then That's the okay. then the Earth if in front of the sun should be about the same, the same relationship when it's casting a shadow on the moon. So if the earth is four times as wide, uh, the earth is four times as wide as the moon, then the shadow on the moon should be 200 miles or so wide, which is less than 10th the diameter of the, of the moon. And we don't see that. And we, we see the, the earth covering the earth shadow covering the, the the moon quite easily with a blood moon. It's not even close. So how can you have it both ways? Uh, is that what a blood moon is? The Earth covering the, the yeah covering yeah the moon? blood yeah a lot of people don't know. If so, when the Earth yeah when the Earth gets in front of the sun supposedly, it darkens the um it, it casts a shadow on the moon and depending on the atmosphere stuff it's it turns red. So yeah, it's a blood moon. Oh, oh because the atmosphere because yeah. the, what is it? It's 90% oxygen. No. Or 98% well, no, no, oxygen but, but, but also don't, and don't confuse that with like a waxing and waning crescent, meaning it, if it happens during <laughs> the day, you know, when it's, it's different than, eh, it doesn't really matter. So, but, but, but ask your friend, for, forget about that part. Just ask your friend, how does the earth's shadow not get shrunk down by 97%? If, 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 if you, that's good. Uh, 
So, oh, I'm sorry. Let me let me yeah, ask you a question real quick. Which is so the Georgetown guy when he got those five questions. So he got the long distance photography, the vacuum of space, the eclipse shadow, the temperature of the moon, which is number four, and Van Allen radiation belts was number five. And yeah, that was okay. it. He got the questions and he he folded and said that nah, that's it. I'm not doing it. And that that's what I would expect, because if a scientist, he, you do not want to be the scientist that says, I don't know how to answer these questions. You cannot be right. that guy because they, it, would, wow. it would turn bad. So uh, I'm waiting wow. for waiting for Tyson. Uh, it was nice to see William Shatner come on board today and condemn us. That was really good. I was yeah, uh, I saw that. Yeah, right. That'll gain All track by the bar morning. Publicity. William oh, yeah. Shatner is saying flat earth is good for us. Absolutely, it is. Are you kidding? Star, he's one of the few remaining Star Trek members. I uh, absolutely, we will we'll take that. I, I yeah, love us or hate us. That's the whole point. You can't ignore us. Why? Why is he even commenting? Why is he even? Why is he even good? Somebody must have gotten back to him and said that I that I heard that there was a rumor that Shatner was on board and and whatever. Oh, he's he's I just heard about that, and I know why. Actually, Joe Rogan called and said, hey, mother, I will put you in a camorra if you don't recant what they were saying. Oh, seriously? Is that the... No, no, no. Okay, that's a good one. I, I was, that's a pretty good story. I like that. No. I was, yeah. Uh, you know, any... I, I, the Flat Earth community, you guys are so awesome. I mean, you, Rob Skeever, D. Marvel. Well, thanks. First of all, I got an issue with you. I have an issue with D. Marvel. Because he's a slight one. I mean, too good look. He's a, he's a, you really a diehard flat earther? Shouldn't the Marvel receive an F? Why? What? 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 Marvel? Come on, that was funny. That was oh, funny. I, see you you I, I see what you did there. I I see what you did there. That's good. His, his, his. Come on, Mark. I'm on a roll, and it's cinnamon. <laughs> cinnamon. Cinnamon, yeah. Well, when you think of the some of the heavy hitters like you, Mark Sargent, and yeah. Robbie Davidson, and then D. Bobble, then there's Rob Skiba, the Gentile Jew with a flat earth view, coming to the near you. Come on! What, what? I mean, you know, Rob, he's awesome for disproving to his critic of shutting down the spinning globe Earth's opponent. Oh that's my good. gosh! That's good. Just, I, all right, not, all right. On that not. one, oh, let's let's end let's end on that one because I have got to take one more call okay. before the break. Anyway, thank you for for the Al Pacino thing, and uh, uh, please call in again. All right, we'll do. All right, have, have a good one. See ya. It's not often I get impressions, but I love that one. All right, uh, let's pick up one more before the break, and then we have one more segment after this. Let's do four one nine four one nine. You got about three minutes. To say your piece, and you are issues or something. What is happening over there? Hi, is someone there? Yeah, yeah. You're actually you're not on hold anymore. Hey, that's what's up. Hey, what's going on, Mark? Hey, where where are you? At work. Uh, Where 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 is this work? (laughs) Oh, I work at a chair factory. Oh, cool. Yeah, hey, uh, not, actually, I was just calling in to listen to the show, but uh, oh, no, I'll put hey, you back. Good, I, I, no, that's that's fine. Uh, hey, did you hear about the thing about uh, President Trump talking about? Uh, he was talking to the Marines today in California. He was yeah. talking about Space Corps. Yep. Did you look yep. into that? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the peanut gallery mentioned to me right away. In fact, that was the intro quote by the peanut gallery. Was hey, he been pushing that alien agenda really hard lately? Yeah, they are. I, I'd really wish they they're get talking. they get on with it because we've uh, because the flat Earth is just about just about ready to take it to the next level and if they ruin our party, I am going to take a personal offense to it. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, I, I was going to keep it short. I just uh, I'm at work and I know it's loud, so. Okay. Uh, hey, man, I appreciate you taking my call. And, All uh, right, I'll I'll put you on yeah, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put you on mute so I, I won't hang up on you. All right, thank you. Okay. And let's see. So, Peter Kelly wants me to mention the Fox News story. Would that be the military encounter with the UFO revealed? I'm guessing yes. 
Uh, let's see. Three, no, it's not three minutes to the break. It's a minute and a half. I do not know what watch you're using. Okay, so the Fox story is called Military Encounter with UFO Revealed in 2015 Footage, if I'm not mistaken. And it shows a cool little video, newly released video of a mysterious object streaking over the Atlantic Ocean shows the Pentagon needs to take UFO seriously. The sensational two-minute clip captured by a camera aboard a F- sorry, FA-18 jet flying at 25,000 feet wowed military personnel. And yeah, you remember, they don't have to release this. So the question is, why did they release it? Why are they talking about this? Are they ramping up for... Finally, finally going to do some sort of reveal where they have to introduce another civilization. I think they have to, because if we are talking about a enclosed, pressurized system, something with a dome, something that was built, something with structure, then the only way you can kind of turn it in a certain direction is you have to have another civilization come on board and say either that we built it or we know who built it or we have something to do with it in some way, a, a, a group higher than us with better aircraft. And honestly, they probably should be better looking, I would think, because if they're green and like three feet tall, I don't think we'd even listen to them, perfectly honest. Anyway, uh, last chance to call, and we've got three more calls on the line, and we'll pick those up when we come back. And anyone else, feel free to get in line with those guys. But three minutes, be right back. Oh, this is... Um, Who's this? Like peaches. Operate. Peaches. His face is in the muck. I think his zipper's stuck. Real people. Real radio. Wherever you are, make it TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World Part 4 of 4. This is your last chance to call in and say your piece. Phone number is 720-897-6111, 720-897-6111, or 213-233-3998, 213-233-3998. There's a lot of threes in there. But either way, let's pick up... Where is this one going? Tucson, Arizona. 520 area code. You're on live with Strange World right now. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. Uh, you're going to remember me. Oh, boy. I was a ship captain. You're merchant ship- Marine. Oh, you were, you, were, you were my Merchant Marine? Yeah. Please. Oh, right on, man. What's What's going on? Yeah, you know who I'm buddies with now is uh, Zulu One, the other Mark. Right on. That's awesome, man. Yeah, we go back and forth uh, a lot. And I've been uh, working on some stuff that I'm kind of dying to get out there. And the idea was spurred on a little bit by a Globebusters episode where they were talking about the inverse square law of light. Yeah. And if you look, uh, um, this just applies to just general starlight in the heliocentric model. And they tell us, like, the nearest stars are five light years away, blah, blah, blah. Well, if you call it out on that, because the inverse square law is a law. You know, it's not like a theory of, of gravity or something. It is light diminishes at this rate per distance, you know, squared as it goes away. Hey, hold, if you hold, apply wait, the inverse square... Wait, wait, wait. Hold that uh-huh. thought. One second. Uh, I, 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 I hate to do this to you. I'm not. I, and you can yes. just stay. Don't don't go. But the peanut gallery reminded me that I forgot something. Yeah, go. <laughs> yes, that was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album Night and Day. There we go. Continue, please. <laughs> Got it. So if we apply the inverse square law to like the luminosity and distance of even the nearest brightest stars. Mm-hmm. the light wouldn't reach like 
a percentage of the way, you know, like a percent of the way to Earth. Right. So that's just one like massive debunk to the heliocentric model. But that kind of got the wheels turning in my head. And what hit me the other day on top of the inverse square law is uh, we also don't invoke perspective and what the size of that starlight would be in our field of view. Um, and I fly race drones a lot and uh, FPV drones and stuff. So like field of view and how our eyes perceive things and how small or large they are, that sort of thing is like been in my world a lot the last couple of years. So um, it was pretty easy numbers for me to crunch and go down that path. And like the human eye can see to a resolution of about 0. 0.05 degrees. Yeah. And oh, let me see. I, 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 let me uh, switch screens. And I've got the number here when I was talking back and forth to Zulu one. The, and like an average star at one light year would be point zero 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 one nine five three one two degrees at one light year. And we've got the, the problem is by the time you do five light years, uh -huh. the number gets so ridiculous. You have to like have it at a factor of 10 to even fit it on a stream. That's how small an average star would be to our field of view in resolution. So like it's so far beyond ridiculous when they say that we're seeing something five light years away, even the size of a star that, that like it just thoroughly crashes the model. Like it, it's, it's really, uh, um, and it's, it's about it is it's, it's hard known science, you know, uh, yeah. you know, you can, you can say something 10 feet across and double the distance it is this many degrees and, you know, double that distance. It's this many degrees. Right. And that's just, that's just, you know, uh, simple straight math. Right. And it thoroughly, thoroughly debunks the heliocentric model. There is no way we could essentially see any stars in the sky. It's, and it's so far beyond mathematically possible that uh, it's actually hard to represent in numbers. Yeah, I agree. So I agree. I think that's, that's one of the beauties of the whole uh, heliocentric model, which is, and I, I did a video on this a while ago, which was not the starlight thing, but how the numbers are so vast that we have yeah. w it just loses comprehension. We have nothing to relate it to. And yeah, it, but that's where they screwed up because we know how light diminishes with distance and yes. we know how objects diminish. Still... And we know how bright a star is, how big a star is. Right. 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 And if we apply their own you know, their own laws and their own math to their own model, it destroys it. I've found a couple of like, uh, math and, uh, um, uh, not astrophysics. Well, yeah, like astronomy professors online mm -hmm. or, you know, on YouTube that were like doing things and I start hitting them with that and they quit talking right away. <laughs> oh my God. I'm like, why don't you run these numbers? Why can we see something that's this big in resolution? You know what? And call me out if I'm wrong about, you know, how big it would be call me out on it. What's the, you know, how would you run the math? And they just like literally shut down and won't talk to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and also that's also assuming something that you probably didn't even factor into your equations, which is that you're assuming that there's no debris, any debris between here and that oh, yeah. point. You're thinking, well, how much debris could there be? I'm going, well, you take 720 million miles an hour multiplied by years. I'm sorry, thousands of years. And you have the chance of, you know, how many asteroid belts are between there and here? You know, they, it, everything adds up. Everything clouds the, you know, clouds the field. And, yeah. It's... They tell us that a light year is 5,878,625,373. Oh, no. I was off by a, by a full friggin' comma. <laughs> move the decimal place three the decimal point three more places to the right from what i was just oh, saying yeah then miles then you're, in a yeah then, then you're in a quadrillion at that point yeah it was five quadrillion i, I read that wrong holy crap yeah you can't even like the, when when you talk about like the size of that the star would be in our vision and the light reaching here it like i would you know they're talking they're like the rumors about dubay or somebody going up against neil degrasse tyson like the I would love to friggin' go up against him with a friggin' dry erase board. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and say, okay. That's why he doesn't debate. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it just, it completely gets crushed in so many directions. And, and, uh, I've just been excited about the, the applying the inverse square law, but then also applying, uh, um, 
the field of view and the actual size. And it just, it's, it's almost incomprehensible how big the numbers are that it crushes the model. Like it, it's, it's, uh, and it's, it's, you know, irrefutable science that crushes the model. It's not like, you know, you can't sit there and, you know, you can argue, well, you can see that lighthouse because of refraction. Right. It's, you know, it's hard numbers that they, that they, you know, live by and, and whatever, and uh, their own numbers like literally crush them. Right. Right. Yeah, no, it's good. So like anyway, that's it. Sol- some solid work there, uh, man. Thank you for that. Yeah, I got, you know, several projects going on. We're uh, um, going to try to build our own balloon because, you know, the off-the-shelf weather balloons are designed to burst at 136,000 feet. Right. And I already found somebody that's got 100, 176,000 feet on their fir- on one of their tries. And so if we can hit, you know, 200, 250,000 feet with balloons we build ourselves, we'll get some... Nice. Some good arguments going that way, but anyway, I've been uh, I haven't been out of the scene. I've just been kind of quiet, and I uh, uh, right. co-host another little channel on YouTube. But uh, I'm still around, and uh, all right. Um, are, are you thinking about going like, to the, like, uh, the the Phoenix meetup or not? Uh, I haven't heard of it. When and where? I'll just type in just type in YouTube. Okay, let I let me find it real quick. It is do do do. It is March 27th in Phoenix at a bar, I think. It's at the, oh, come on. Refresh, you stupid Interesting. page. It is going to be at the OHSO Brewery, 10810810 North Tatum Boulevard, Phoenix, Arizona. It's going to be the twenty. March 27th. So if you guys are interested, anyone out there listening, you can do this today meetup. Just type in Flat Earth Meetup Phoenix and you'll, you'll yeah. see the latest one. So anyway, just like yeah, that. Yeah, it sounds I'm afraid I'm going to be in Cal. I got to go to California with the family. I drove yeah. semi trucks for six months and I've only been back for like a week. Oh, and, yeah. Well, uh, no, I'm still, it. It's okay. I'm still trying to get like uh, everything back. Like the, the honeydew list gets really big when you're on the road all but three days a month for six months. <laughs> well, that's awful. So, Okay. Trying to get all that straightened out. Right. Well, cool, man. But I drove forty thousand miles. And, huh? Uh, I, well, I was just say I, I I do have to pick up a few more calls. Any any parting words? Oh, just uh, it's flat and uh, the numbers prove it. <laughs> right on, man. All right, you have a good one. Okay. All right, I'm, all right. For I'll sure, say. have a good one, Mark. We'll be in touch. Okay. Bye bye. All right, let's jump straight over to. Wait, have I taken this one before? Oh, uh, crap. I don't know. This one looks familiar. Who is that first person I... You know what? I will pick them up, but let me pick up this other one first. Let's pick up 510 area code, and then we'll jump back to Texas, and I'm not sure if they want me to pick them up or not, but we're going to pick up uh, California first. And I they... Yeah. Here we go. 510 area code. You're on live with Strange World right this second. Test fire. What's going on? Pittsburgh, California, the impossible city. The impossible man. Nathaniel, what's what's, what's happening, my man? Oh, man, I can't call it. Uh, I was debating on whether I was going to call in, but when I talked to my brother Mark earlier and heard that he was getting trolled, I figured I might as well go on ahead and add to the to the, uh, the, 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 the ridiculous rhetoric that we call in with. <laughs> but, I, you know what? I, I, look, it, we can't, you can't please everybody. Yeah. And she was giving me crap just uh, the way I mispronounced one word. It apparently was like a, yeah. like nails on a chalkboard. So whatever. Uh, yeah. At the end of the day, it still must be good to the ears because in order to get that type of information, you got to be tuning in on a regular, even though you say, there you go. And and she said that she yeah. said I like what I'm listening to, but if you say that one more time, I'm gonna go insane. It's like all right, all right, I get it, I get it. That's all good. That's all good. But yeah, just uh, you know, I like the show tonight, and uh, you know, all the experiments that everybody's doing is wonderful, and uh, you know, uh, the experiment about the the the, uh, the numbers and all that that's great. But one thing about it is we are visual people and sometimes the most simplest thing is the best thing. And like yourself, I want to keep on hammering this thing, man. Can yep. we please, please, for the love of God, for the love of humanity, can we please see one individual get in the suit and get in that pressure wise vacuum and let's see what happens. I, you know what? After, 
after I saw that experiment from that astronaut from, I think it was the early 60s, I think, I would be, that would strike, if I was an astronaut, that that concept would strike fear into my heart. Because, as you know, when a human body is exposed to a vacuum, even even a slight vacuum, your um, uh, your your blood starts to boil instantly. Not because of heat, but because of the the air pressure. Bubbles start to form, and it's 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 it could kill you. So now I get it. Now I get it. So you train in water. You make it look good for the cameras. You don't get in a freaking vacuum chamber. But yeah, I, I'd pay real money to uh, to put somebody exactly. in a vacuum chamber. And uh, exactly. Exactly. I'm hoping they do because, yeah, that, that makes sense. In fact, the, I, I'm not going to take credit for this. The guy that, that I can't remember the name of the video that, that I watched, he's going, the only reason you would ever train in water is because it looks good for the cameras. That's the only reason. You have to train in something. You know, so training in water looks like you're actually doing something, but it's absolutely the opposite of what you should be doing because water is nowhere near what a vacuum would be. Water is this thick exactly. syrup. Why, why don't you swim in soup? Uh, you, you you would not feel the same way. You wouldn't you wouldn't have any resistance in a vacuum. You wouldn't do anything. Plus, your suit would react completely differently. Your suit would blow up. Exactly. It would start to expand like a balloon, and there isn't a fabric out there that can withstand a vacuum. So yeah, if it's one, and if it's one, and if it's, if it's one thing that we are people, we are we we are visual for those who have eyes and, and still visually impaired, who still have vision, yep. we like to see things, you know. Yep. And that's one you cannot. It's, we already know how it goes. You throw an old grainy black and white video, and that's way back into the archives. People ain't really you know resonate with that. But when you got something new, <laughs> right? And you're constantly trying to show it, and you can't do it. Yeah, that right there, that'll go a long way. But obviously, we get it, and I'm pretty sure we won't see it. But nevertheless, yeah, that's a good one to keep on asking people. Keep yep. Us. Yeah, yeah, get in the freaking yeah. chamber. Yeah, you want to prove to me you're an astronaut? In fact, I'm the first astronaut I run into is one of the questions I'm going to ask is, okay, so did you ever test your suit in a vacuum? Because I think it'd be pretty important to test it in a vacuum. Hey, how about- Hey, how about we get the uh, SpaceX the SpaceX crew to pump that thing up? Go, 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 go! Ah, oh, that's nice. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Have them stand outside yeah. the vacuum chamber as their boy inside now, dies. Yep. Now that'll be an event. That'll be an event. Absolutely. Now, that's all I got. Okay. That's all I got. I know we got other calls, man. Let's keep it flat. And, uh, yeah. Until next time. All right, man. You have a good one. All right, you too. Take care. Bye, bye. Okay, let's do. Okay, who haven't I gotten on this list? There's people still hanging around, and now I got to remember the numbers. So, East. Let's go back to Texas. Let's go back to two five four. Hey, two five four. Were you just hanging around just to listen, or did you call back? I called back. Oh boy. What is, what is, <laughs> oh boy. What is, this oh, oh, you had were, this did, great show. Yeah, I do. I, I like cult wall to wall calls. I think it's fun. That people people tend <laughs> to play off each other. So man, uh, this has been a great that. show. I love listening. Uh oh. Oh no! She hit the button. Oh, she's paying me a compliment, and she accidentally hit the button. That's not a rookie mistake, but it's pretty close. If you ab- accidentally hit the hit the disconnect button, and I don't know what kind of phone she was using. So we'll wait, wait, wait. Is she back? She's back. Hang on. You were in mid sentence of telling me how wonderful the show was, and then you just disappeared. I don't know what happened. Man, uh, it's been I, great. I, you I, and Mark Tarkin, that was great. And then the expert you had that called back. Yeah. But yeah, you talked the, to the guy about, you know, Starman. And I hadn't thought of that movie in a long time. And I wanted to ask you, what is a quote that you can say from that movie that was one of your favorites? The Starman with Jeff Bridges and Karen Allen? Uh-huh. Um, 1982. <laughs> Super old, dude. Yeah, it's an older movie. No, it was one of my favorite early sci-fi movies. Uh, 
I okay. have a favorite quote. What, what, you want to know mine? My favorite, I can tell you my favorite quote from that movie. My favorite quote was at the very end, which is weird because one of the listeners uh, to the show actually stopped by that Arizona crater because that you know that's where the finale was was for that movie was set was at that that crater down in out in Arizona, and Jeff Bridges was trying was was as the alien was talking to the Karen and the other guy and he goes he goes you want you want do you want to know what I what I like most about your species you seem to be your best when things are at their worst and i thought that was a it's even though i disagreed with the saying i thought it was so noble and like you know what it, that's true up until the breaking point we we have a, a noble sense of helping others until things get really, really dire, <laughs> and then it's every man for themselves. And then you're every day. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Then well, it's like, I was in chat on Zulu One, and I can't remember. Jonathan had a quote from it, and it was less than like, well, I can't remember what his quote was, but my favorite part, my favorite line in that movie is when, you know, they almost get hit by that truck when yeah. he's driving. Yeah. And he's like, yellow means go very fast. <laughs> oh, right, 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 right. Uh, yeah. Because he had been stop. watching her drive forever. And that's yeah. how he learned to drive. Yep. Red means stop. <laughs> Green means go. Yellow means go very fast. Yeah. Yeah. And that's my, and favorite. I, that's my favorite quote. And I loved the, uh, I mean, honestly, the, the movie is so well made. And, and considering it was. It is. The, it's the, when he it's was, funny. It's romantic. It's everything. When he was singing Sinatra, uh, when he was imitating things, okay. was, Jeff Bridges has had a, a fantastic career. Uh, really, yes, he has some great, great stuff. And Starman was a, a wonderful little gem that was hidden, hidden in the early '80s amongst all this yeah, other stuff. That's that was, like the first one I can really remember watching of him. But yeah, and and I'm a Karen Allen. I mean, of course, he was in Tron, but yeah, she was. That was one of her roles that she took in between. Uh, she, if both people remember like a couple years earlier, she played Indiana Jones first girlfriend. Uh huh. I remember for that a few years before that she was the girlfriend in animal house directed by John. I don't Hart. remember that. I don't remember animal house very well for some reason. Really? The party I watched it on. You sound like <laughs> I was about to say, you sound like someone who's done a few parties. In your lifetime. <laughs> no, no, no. I just see him. Uh, I'm a very calm person. Really, really. <laughs> Excess has no place in your life whatsoever. I question that. <laughs> hey, do. you know, you got to cut loose every now and then. Everybody uh, listening, you got to cut loose every now and then. Because if you're not living, you're not living. Hey, get busy living or get busy dying. You know what I mean? That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, you. Hey, you know. I, oh, I I love. Have loved a great you. night, everybody. All right, you too, and thank you for calling in twice. <laughs> three times. Well, yeah, technically three times. It's good. I actually forgot. <laughs> you're not so bad. You you you're sharp enough. <laughs> Figured that out. All right, have have a drink on me, okay? All right. And the peanut gallery says, "Get one more call in." You know, I would. But believe it or not, I absolutely I, I tapped all the calls. There's uh, there's uh, Ohio still on the line and New York, but they're just listening. And so it, it, the call line is absolutely open. If somebody wants to call in in the next couple minutes and just say hi, you don't even have to say much. Just say hey, long time listener, first time caller, love the show, that whole thing. You could, or you could ask me ask me movie trivia. If you're ever stuck, just ask me movie trivia. Or what's your favorite this? Or what I have an opinion on pretty much everything at this point because I'm old. No calls? Oh, oh, I have. I may have to go. Oh, yeah, shameless plugs. Oh, right, right. Oh, I'm sorry. Holy smokes, what was I thinking? Tomorrow I am going to be doing flat Earth and other hot potatoes. At least I think I am, unless she kicks me out for not remembering the show. Flat Earth and other hot potatoes with Patricia Steer. That is S T E E R E. Sub to her channel if you haven't already. She's the uh, busiest person on flat Earth. Last time I checked, done two hundred and something shows, interviewed just about everybody, and I 
think she is also going to the premiere of the documentary. I think maybe in Toronto. So that'll be kind of fun. And what else? What else? What else? Uh, don't forget the Canadian Flat Earth Convention is going to be in August in Edmonton. And oh, there's a call that's coming in right now. And 2018.com, FE2018.com is the Denver conference. Okay, let's pick these guys up. Okay, this is New Jersey. Jersey, you're up. Oh, hey, is this Mark? Uh, it might be. Who's asking? Hey, Mark. Hey, it's Larry. <laughs> hey, Larry. How are you? <laughs> well, good. You said call in and just say hello, so I just called to say hello. Oh, that's it. Uh, are you are you up in the Northeast? Are you guys getting hit? I, I normally I don't talk about the weather, but uh, are you getting hit with that that system that's coming up there? Uh, well, we well we could be. I mean, it's actually not too bad here. So it's it's up in the 40s, and we're waiting for spring, and you know it's not been too bad. So yeah, I'm in New Jersey, uh, and Mark from Zulu put uh, Mr. Zulu put me up to this to actually call you and finally say hello. Oh, you know, on air for some. Gotcha. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have that. To... No, no. I'm glad you did though, because I Zulu and those guys are doing it, so I don't read any emails because they it's like you already yeah, read too I... many emails. You don't have to. I'm going, well, have people call in just to say hi. It's amazing how many people don't call in because they just don't know what to say. It's like, say whatever. Yeah. Well, I could say, well, I, well, I could say, I, I could say whatever. Usually I get in trouble if I say too much, though. So I don't want to say too much. I'm just going to well, call in and say hello. Love the show. I've been listening for an awfully long time. <laughs> uh, actually, too long. Uh, I, I need to get a life at this point because uh, I listen too long and. I'm, I'm kind of hiding out in the basement right now, so I really need to get out there and like join the local public at large type of thing. It's all right, though. I'm doing good. Well, don't, because the public's overrated. You go out there, people start to like, try to tear your clothes off, and it's like, oh, flat earther, but in a good way. Well, if you, well yeah, you know, if you've been around me long enough, that happens to me on a weekly basis, so I, I really don't want to <laughs> emphasize on that. That's for a different type of show. I, this is more family-oriented, so I, I don't right. want to bring the house down or lose the views or anything else like that. Gotcha. But, uh, it's a family want, show. Oh, Remember. Exactly, exactly. I just want just wanted to call in and say hello because you said, hey, call in and say hello. I didn't right. expect you to pick up, and I'm not even sure why you picked up on my number. Well, no, I, I, I picked it because it showed up on the board. I, I doesn't doesn't say your name. It just says Hampton, New oh. Jersey. So, so. Oh, I, well, the, well, the thing is, you're, you're more popular than this. You shouldn't have to talk to me. I mean, you've got a lot of followers. So, you, you know, oh. I do appreciate you picking I no. yeah. and and anyway, I got I gotta let you go. We're gonna close down here in just a few. But uh uh thank you very much and we'll talk soon, okay? It sounds good, Mark. Talk to you soon. Bye okay, bye bye. Uh and Patricia Steers reminded me to do a shameless plug, and had she been listening just a few minutes ago, she would have heard that. That I actually did a shameless plug. So flatter than the hot potatoes with me and you know that red headed person tomorrow at three o'clock Pacific, six Eastern. And with that, we are going to go to credits. Thanks for everyone who's calling in. Uh, come back next time. I will be here. Same flat time. Same flat channel. Cue music. Just like that. It was like magic. Really. Only with technology. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs>